a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in Exploring ETFs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Exploring ETFs. I'm Nina Mishra, and today we are talking about Japan ETFs. And why Japan ETFs? Because there is a lot of interest in Japanese stocks and ETFs since Warren Buffett announced his investments in Japan. And I'm getting a lot of questions about Japan ETFs. And uh, so we know that on his 90th birthday, uh, Warren Buffett, who is the greatest investor in my view of our time, he revealed that he, his company, Berkshire Hathaway, has invested uh, uh, about $6 billion in Japan's five biggest trading houses. These are Mitsubishi, Mitsui, Sumitomo, Ituchi, and Marubeni. And these are giant conglomerates uh, trading companies. They are involved in a variety of businesses, including technology, manufacturing, retail, energy, and mining. And uh, Workshare Hathaway said that these are 5% uh, stake each currently. And these may be increased to 9.9%. And uh, they plan to hold these investments for long term, which is usually with all their investments. And uh, they had funded these uh, acquisitions uh, or investments very smartly by issuing yen uh, denominated bonds over the past one year uh, at an interest rate of about 0.67%, less than 1%, according to the Financial Times. And the money, that money has been used to buy these companies which have a dividend yield of a little over 4%. So that's a smart funding strategy. Now, apart from Buffett's investment, there is a lot of interest in Japan and uh, fund managers are looking at Japan um, because Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is stepping down due to ill health and Yoshu Yoshi Hide Suga, uh, he's the new prime minister, and he is expected to continue easy monetary policies or ergonomics, which was started by Shinzo Abe. And uh, in general, whereas when there is a new prime minister and there are chances of a new snap election too, uh, so there is uh, more interest in Japan, Japanese stocks uh, and ETFs uh, because of the new change. And in general, global fund managers have been underweight Japan over the past few years. And uh, some fund managers, some investors are also concerned about stretched, stretched valuations in the US, particularly of technology stocks. Uh, whereas Japanese uh, equities, they look very attractive in terms of all metrics of valuations. But at the same time, investors should remember that Japan has some inherent problems like uh, uh, demographics, uh, the shrinking population, their companies, uh, you know, the productivity is usually low and they have some very rigid labor markets, labor laws. So those are concerns with Japan. But it, in general, it seems that uh, in terms of valuations and investor interests, uh, Japanese equities and ETFs look attractive now. So let's take a look at some Japan ETFs now. So the first one we are taking a look at is by Franklin. And this is actually the cheapest Japan ETF. Uh, it's called Franklin Japan FTSE Japan ETF. It holds large and mid cap Japanese companies, follows a market cap weighting, has about 448 million in assets and charges just nine basis points. We are not talking about the most popular Japan ETF, which is by iShares, because that is much more expensive, much higher expense ratio. Instead, we are looking at two cheaper versions. So to learn more about this ETF with the ticker symbol FLJP, we can go to the code page on Zax.com. Uh, read our articles, reports, etc. And from there, we can go to the external homepage uh, to learn more about this ETF and look at the portfolio. So you will see that well-known Japanese companies, Toyota, 
SoftBank, which has been in focus of late, and Sony, these are the top holdings in this ETF. The second one we are talking about is by JP Morgan. It is JP Morgan's Beta Builders Japan ETF, ticker symbol PBJP. Now, this is very much similar to the earlier ETF that we discussed. This also holds large and mid cap Japanese companies, follows a market cap weighting. This has an expense ratio of 19 basis points. And uh, it has a much larger asset base, $5.1 billion. And again, to learn about the CTF, you can go to the code page on zax.com and the external homepage, JP Morgan's webpage for the CTF, and you will see that portfolio is very much similar. Uh, you will get similar exposure whether you buy EWJ or Franklin or JP Morgan product, Toyota, SoftBank, Sony, these would be the top holdings. The main uh, difference in these ETFs uh, would be the expense ratio and asset base uh, are slightly different. Uh, I mean, they're quite different uh, for these ETFs. Now, the third one that I wanted to talk about is by Wisdom Tree. Now, this is a currency hedge Japan ETF. This would do well when the Japanese yen weakens against the dollar. And when the Japanese yen weakens against the dollar, of course, export companies, Japanese exporters would do much better because of a weaker yen. Uh, but I would like to add that Japan, Japanese yen is uh, a safe haven currency. So whenever there is uncertainty in the world, and we have a lot of uncertainty because of the coronavirus crisis. And we will also have a lot of uncertainty in the US because of upcom upcoming presidential election. So there are chances of the yen strengthening against the dollar. So that is something investors should keep in mind. But if they believe that the yen is going to weaken, then, then probably they can look at the CDF, which hedges out the currency exposure. This is more expensive because of the currency hedging, charges 48 basis points. And this is also very popular with 1.6 billion in assets. Now, on the next slide, we have competitive performance against the S&P 500. And as I mentioned, uh, Japanese ETFs have not done well over the past one year, over the past couple of years, uh, the S&P 500 e ETF or the index has done much better than the, uh, the market cap weighted ETFs as well as the currency hedged ETF. Uh, the currency hedged ETF is almost flat. The market cap weighted ETF has returned about 7% over the past one year. And then we have the competitive performance over the past one month. You will see that in the past one month, uh, Japanese ETFs have done much better than the S&P 500 index. And that is just because of renewed interest in Japan and also because of profits investment, uh, which resulted in renewed interest in Japanese equities. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer. And also make sure to subscribe to our videos so that you don't miss anything. And I'll see you next week.